How are you? Where's your wife? I've got no wife now. Because this is why I'm asking you. Because this is second time now. If I if I'm married, they run away. If I'm married, they run away. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I meet you. And that is the greatest challenge you are facing now. But you have been lonely for some time now. For almost 20 years. That's what I'm saying. I live in England. If I bring to, to England, they run away. They run away. The one I married in Nigeria brought her, they run away. They run away. Almost four now. See, so that's my, I'm just like a learner. But there's a court case. I want to advise you. They have dismissed the case in the past. Yeah. Okay. But I don't want to say more than that because I don't want anything to, to distort the case on the ground. I will see you one-on-one. -on -one. Come here. Come on. That was a test doctor did for you. Yeah. Is it prostrate? It's prostrate. Go and wait for me. Go and wait for me. Because I said this is the third time now. There was a heat, energy, light, they blow into your inners. Yeah. They say they want to, you have been battled with it for some time now. Yes, I've been praying over it. They could have operated me, but I'm, I said I don't want the operation. That's what I'm saying. I said they will have operated you, but you say no. Don't worry, go and wait for me. After receiving the word of prophecy from Prophet TB Joshua, Mr. Emmanuel came back to the Synagogue Church of All Nations with his family to be reconciled by the man of God, Prophet TB Joshua. As a communicator between the visible and the invisible, Prophet TB Joshua exposed the root cause of Mr. Emmanuel's problems through the word of prophecy given to him by God Almighty. Let's listen to Mr. Emmanuel as he confirms the prophecy. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And that's my name too, Emmanuel. <laughs> uh, my story is as big as this church. My name is Emmanuel Woye Oboko from Israel in the Demi local government. I live in UK actually for 22 years now. And um, nothing, nothing to show for it anyway. And these people there, these are my sons and my grandchildren there. And that woman there is uh, my ex-wife. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I tell people that uh, for 34 years I separated with this woman, I saw her here in this church for the first time. I never know it can be possible. Yeah. Last Sunday, the man of God gave me prophecy that I've been marrying, marrying, marrying. We have got three wives, and uh, I said, now, where is, it asked me, where is my wife? I said, I have no one. I really have none. And I told her I've been marrying, and they run away. If I marry, I, I, they run away. I said, I'm the ugliest man in the world. <laughs> it all started um, when... Uh, I wanted to marry my mother. I was not actually in love with my ex-wife. It was my mother's arrangement. He said, I'm going to marry the lady. Then, I don't know her. But for me to respect my mother's um, this thing. I say, okay, those days when mother used to possess your mind, for me to make my mother happy, I have to marry her. And actually when I married her, things started, we were going fine. Things were going fine until when I started making money. I was into transport business. My transport business started to flourish. I bought trailers. That's where trouble started. I could remember sometime, uh, you used to go to Saloon and got some experience there. 
and tell me I should be signing blank check for her so that they can put any figure in writing my, she likes in my check and withdraw money. Then I said, where you get that? <laughs> eh? So trouble started. Eh? Where do you get that? For me to sign check, for your blank check, so that you put money, any figure you like. I thought it's a joke. The hatred started to increase. There is no month we are in peace. No month we are in peace. To cut the story short, I had two ships at Tenkan Wharf for clearing. My wharf managers, they already there. And I was carrying my briefcase to put inside my car to go to work. All these boys, all these machines, they were small then, but they, have, they, have, they know what happened. As I was about to go to enter my car, she drew my briefcase and said, oh, you don't know uh, one of my daughters, I call her, that one is in England now. Huh? He said, she was sick, and I don't care, I'm going to work. I said, but I've told you, I have a doctor. Where I introduced you, any of my child that is sick, take him there, and he will be treated. The man will keep my, uh, my bill for me. Eh? He said, why? From there, trouble started. And then he ran outside. The, he ran, he, in short, he heard me, fought me. And she was big that time. She was very big. And I was dragging with her. Imagine if a woman would beat me. I have to stand on my feet and raise my blow. And hit her hard. And she fell down. And when she fell down, he got up and went to my, my, my car and bust the windscreen front and back and run away. <laughs> Obviously, I, I didn't know myself. I took my, I took my cutlass. Yes, he was lucky I didn't get him. Only God knows what will happen that day. <laughs> After that day, no more. I told my brother, go to Ido. Go and get 911 and pack on anything she touches and take it home. Anything she touches, even though she hasn't got a dime in my house, anything she touches and load it inside that 911 and take it home. And then I carried all my boys and put them in Santana, um, Santana Private Primary at our mama, where I visit every two weeks. I was a single father. I brought all these children single-handedly. Now, anywhere I go, I'm still, I'm, I'm so emotional. Anywhere I go, they are pointing this a woman. That woman there, they, 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 they story my life. Any business I put, nothing works. And the whole thing even affected my children. My children, the, only this voice, you see, out of God's mercy, Nobody is a froster, nobody is a thief, they are just good children. Imagine we are a father. We live in a country for 22 years. And my children, we are on their own. Why should I be happy? No wife. If I marry the runaway and they say it's the same woman that's doing the whole thing, Teresa, look at my granddaughter. I've never seen her. I only saw her two days ago. My little granddaughter, uh, my little last daughter, although she's not the mother. Look at my granddaughter again. Huh? Punish me. So in England, I watch because I've gone everywhere. I have gone everywhere. No Babala will I never gone. So in short, I came to a, I, there was nothing else for me to do. Until a friend introduced me to school. My son. I phoned him. He's a very successful business guy. But every time, one step forward, three steps backward. And she would tell me, 
And when he tell me, <laughs> I say, if I return to Nigeria, I will butcher this woman. I will use my cutlass. Dear mama, I will use my, if you don't do juju, so say, you know, then I, I go use cutlass to finish up. So, this my son, tell me, daddy, it's better you have to calm down. Eh? I told him, look, I don't have enough money now. He said, daddy, just come. Eh? Go and check the ticket. Go and check the ticket. I check the ticket. Before I know it, he has to pay money into my account. Without telling anybody, I say, no shopping. What would I do to my children, to my grandchildren? He said, that we are not talking about shopping now. Even my own. He, he had never been to any church looking. If I tell him about school, he would be laughing at me. He said, school. He had been hearing all those crap. He, he told me, nothing works. Let everybody defend himself. This guy here. When I came on the 18th, I came to the church on Sunday. I sat down there. I can't believe my eyes. The second person, man of God, touched was me. Yeah. Was me. And uh, he hit the nail and he told me all my problem. I've got so many operations. The postulate, I refused to do it. I told the white man I would never do this. I will pray over it because I know it's dangerous. So he hit the nail on the head. I told him all this. I told him, then asked me to bring all my family. That's more, in, more, more to be exposed. Now, I never knew the woman will agree to come to synagogue. My first daughter in England, I have two daughters in England, all of them are nurses. One of the, the big one told me, Daddy, are you sure mommy will come? Are their mother will come? <laughs> well, I said, I don't know. If he doesn't come, I will take TB Joshua. That is the at large. <laughs> and I know he will make, make her to come. That's what I have in mind. So when I enter Nigeria, I told my son, um, can you take me to synagogue? That was my decision. He said, Daddy, I'll give you my driver. He gave me his driver, actually. We slept, we, I came to the tribe and stayed overnight the next day. I returned the early morning by 1.30 a.m. in the morning. Now, I told my son what, uh, what the, uh, uh, my man of God said. He said, that I will follow you to that church. Huh? Then this is my senior son. I told him. He agreed. Then my thought on this boy... He's a footballer. I tried everything to, for him to come to England. No way. I spent a lot of money. No way. This very boy is my pet those days. This very tall boy you see here. He doesn't talk to me. For no reason. He doesn't talk to me for no He doesn't even talk to the brother. <laughs> he was it's from the mom. Because it was not like this. So... But this boy saw me after that 24, 22 years at synagogue here and was smiling to me peacefully. I carried my grandchildren. Look at one of them. I carried the other one in her, in her hand. And this baby was looking at me, smiling. He slept in my hand. I wept. I wept. You see? Until now, yes, on Thursday we were here, eh, and then here, all of them. It's a miracle to me that I can be able to bring them in this uh, synagogue today yeah, for deliverance. So it's a miracle to me already. Well, you, you have listened to that. That was last Sunday here when the prophetic service was going on, a miss of the people there, our father was given a message, just as early as you have heard, and I asked him to wait for me. I would not want to say much. I know our father has impression about our mommy sitting down. 
Okulugu. Ah, everywhere I go, they told me she's a witch. Everywhere I go, pastors, prophets, even some call her name. So you mean many prophets told you it's a witch? Yes. And but they can't do anything. What is the Ogbolobo? Ogbolobo no original witch. <laughs> okay. So how many years now you have seen her last? 34 years. Before you met her here on Thursday? Yeah, 34 years, yes. Before I met her here. And uh, that was after Sunday service? Yeah, exactly. The next Thursday, you met her? Uh, the next Thursday, we, he came. You know, we're in the presence of God. And uh, nothing is hidden. And uh, our brothers, our, your children are standing there. They are listening. And I want to thank your son, who is not taking side, uh, standing neutral, because he believed that He's building his own family. Look at the role this our brother play. What a decent role. Trying to make sure it's not disconnected with the father, it's not disconnected with the mom, and make sure. Look at if not our brother here today, we will not be able to sit here today and be talking. Because the whole thing will have be worse. Mm. Yeah, if not the role he played, we will not be here today talking about reconciliation, talking about deliverance, talking about uh, prophecy. Because he made sure he played the role. He made sure he invited his father, even put the money in the account, make sure the father come. And when the father came too, look at, he's not even saying no. He said, synagogue, okay, let's go. So, and he tried to play the two roles just like that. The youth nowadays, we have lesson to learn. Because we normally take side. Anytime there's trouble between father and mother, instead of you to stand and take a different role, I mean, stay clear from this matter and make sure you, you are not disconnected with your mom, don't disconnect with your father. Because our role in the matter of our father and mother actually matter. If we are able to take a role our, our brother here have taken now, the, the, the situation will not come to, I mean, desolate. And make sure see what you can do by continuing praying for them. Because they are your father, they are your mom. No matter what happens, no matter the name we call mommy or father, they are the one given back to you. The name prophet and pastor nowadays has become a title. So therefore, we shouldn't be carried away by the title, the name anybody bear. A man can be a prophet or a pastor or a bishop and yet unbeliever. So we still need to ask God. We shouldn't be carried away. Ah, the whole prophet have said Momo is Jewish. The whole pastor have said Momo is No, we, we still need to ask God. In every situation, God has something to say. We need to ask God. Who is Mama, by the way? So this is the issue now. Emmanuel. I don't know what to start saying, but I, I know I have a lot to say. I, my name is Ifain Kenneth Oboko. I'm the second son of the family. And... Uh, I happen to be the most uh, doubting of all the Thomases. I, in the first place, I rarely go to church. I, I've never been a churchgoer. I don't even pray. I live like um, every other you know, free man. I just believe in the laws of nature. You do evil, evil comes to you. You do good, good comes to you. I've always been a naturalist. When I met my wife in Kanu, she was introduced to me by a family I was supplying Pujo's spare parts to. And that was a long time ago, about 2000. And uh, one of the things that she used to lure me sort of into marrying her, because I never dated her, it was just um, unfortunate. 
that I, I was introduced to her by that family. She, you know, was saying she's a Christian. And then anytime um, you, you're talking with her, she, she quotes the book of James, the book of Andrew. Any conversation ends with Christ. And I said, okay, fine. Now that I'm not um, uh, a Christian, so to say, I'm a Christian by birth, but I, I'm not a practicing one. Let me marry this woman who is um, uh, very close to God. And behold, it failed me. Because uh, the woman I thought would lead me to God became something else after I married her. And then when we moved down to Lagos, she started worshiping in altar. Which she goes every, mo- every Sunday morning, she drives herself. But then when she goes to church and comes back, the woman who goes to church singing praises comes back a wild creature. She doesn't care about me. She doesn't care about the family. But she doesn't care about my meal. In fact, it continued until I became diabetic, 2005. And I started talking to her about my health status. And then she doesn't care. She said, I can go and marry somebody who will take care of my diabetes that she didn't uh, bargain for that. And then as she was growing her career, it became worse. She was working with Zenny Bank then. And then uh, she started working with uh, UBA. And then when the career became uh, more progressive, she started getting more wild. I talk, she shouts at me. And then if I want to uh, threaten her with separation, she tells me that the job is better without a husband and she's ready to leave, you know. So this thing started happening and then, no, no, no. Each time I talk with daddy, he will tell me that he wants to come back. He wants to come back. That is, it appears me and you are sharing the same destiny. I said, no, 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 no. You just have to come back. Let's really know what is going on. And then while we're growing up, I remember my dad always talking about my mom being a witch and stuff like that. But I don't want to dwell in that because I don't know how to identify witches anywhere. You know, I tried as much as possible to play my role as a a son, both to my mother and to my father. If I go to England, my father complains that his work is not, he's he's running a, a cab business. And then he doesn't even know what happens to his money. Each time I'm leaving, I give him some money. When I come back to Nigeria, I ask him, Daddy, how are you? If he needs money, the little I can, I send him 2,000, 3,000 pounds for his upkeep. The same thing I do to my mom. I try to remain very neutral until I know one day God will arrest the situation. The, the first thing I did was to renovate my father's house in the village, which he was building before he left. And then I, I, I told my dad that I want my mom to come back to that house. At least let somebody be there taking care of the house. My dad said no, that he, she, he doesn't want to see that woman within his uh, territory. I, I didn't use force. I tried to lure him. I said, even if, it's for, if it is for keeping the house up, you know, each time we'll come back, let's see the house clean. Let our mom come back. So because he listens to me, he said, okay, fine, let her come back. And that's how our mom started staying in the house. Each time we come back, she, she, she comes in to, you know, attend to us. You know, but then I'm one person who doesn't believe in miracles. Until my dad said, look, if I have some money now, I really want to come back to Nigeria. And the first place I'm going to go is uh, synagogue, scone. I said, daddy, when you people see all these things on TV, you think they are just like that. Don't bother yourself. He said, no, 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 no. I am coming back, and as soon as I come back, you are taking me to Scone. I said, okay, fine. Uh, you, you want some money for ticket? He said, yes. If, if only he had some money, he will you know, enter the next available flight. I thought he was joking, because I've done so many things to bring him back home. But each time I raise the topic, he tells one story or the other. If he doesn't tell you about kidnapping, he will tell you that there is no NEPA. He will just give you one excuse or the other. I said, NEPA is not a barrier. I have generator in my house. He said, what about the car? He needs the car to go out. I said, I have cars in my house, so don't worry about that. You know, he gives one excuse or the other. But one thing that really made him very sure that he was going to come back was because he wanted to visit Scone. He said, I'm coming back, and I'm going to Scone, and I'm going to solve this problem. I said, as you have said it, then the problem is solved. I didn't have the money he was asking for, but I have a friend who normally gives him money in England. I said, pay him 500 pounds into daddy's account, because he said he found ticket for about 500 pounds, and then uh, I'll, I'll reimburse you. The guy immediately gave him the money, and my dad called me and said he has received the money. Later the next day, he called me and I said the 500 pounds ticket will not work. They said it's 625, but don't worry, I'm going to make up for the difference. I'm going to get the 125 and, you know, I said, ah, daddy talking like this, then there's a miracle somewhere coming on the way, you know? I thought it was a joke until he called me and said he's in Nigeria. Where are you now? You're not in the airport. I said it's a lie. 
I called my elder brother to come to my house so that we'll drive straight to the airport because I live very close to the airport. I stay in Ajawa State. When my brother came, I told him that, Daddy, we're expecting that you know. He said, yes, but until we see him. We didn't go to the airport until he was outside the arrival calling me on phone. We had to even rush to go and pick him. He was, behold, it was our dad. You know, I, t- I took him home and I told every other person that dad is around though. And then the next day he said, I'm going to school. Early in the morning, please take me to school. I said, daddy, I'm not, I don't like even waking very early in the morning. And then I'm not all this, uh, you know, church fan. Uh, any of these uh, prophetic things it doesn't work for me. My dad said, you don't want to follow me to school, Nabi, and it's very close to your house. I said, I don't want to go. I will allow my driver to sleep overnight and take you to school. So I asked my driver to sleep overnight, and the next, very early in the morning, before I woke up, they had already gone. So when daddy came back uh, later at about 1.30 a.m., I was still awake waiting for him. He said, do you know that the man of God spotted me? I was about the second person this man spotted. I said, you, of, of all the congregation and all the people that are coming to school, the man spotted you. He said, yes. I said, no, no, no. This is more than, I, I, I don't believe you. He said, but if you, you didn't watch the television, I said, I don't, I didn't. He said, this man spotted me. And the first thing he asked me, where is my wife? So this man went directly to the problem. I said, what? He now said, okay, fine. That the, the man of God said, all the family members should come. I said, ah, when is the next appointment? He said, uh, he doesn't know whether it's Thursday or Sunday. In fact, he was so excited that he, he didn't even, I said, okay, let it even be the Thursday. I was supposed to travel for a, um, um, a job in the East. I said, let us gather the whole family. He said, the first thing he knows is that my mom will not come. I said, well, let us try that. I called my mother. I said, Mommy, there's something going on in uh, um, T.B. Joshua's uh, church, very close to where my younger brother lives, because my mom was staying with my younger brother. The perfect thing about this miracle is that my mom, that has been in the village always, is in Lagos for some you know, months now, because my uh, uh, younger brother's uh, wife had a, a, a baby. So the whole thing was so arranged that, I, you know, I know how t- I, I've been trying to pull my mom to come and stay in Lagos. My mom would not want to come and stay. Now... My dad said, this woman will not come. I bet you she will not come. I said, daddy, don't conclude. Let me invite her. Behold, I told my mother that her attention is needed in school on Thursday. My mom said, how early? I said, maybe by five. You know, say people, they plenty there. My mom said, no, wala. I called my younger brother, the one uh, uh, she was staying with. My younger brother said, okay, fine. I'm going to bring, uh, bring her. Nobody complained. Very early, 5 a.m., we were here. And my mom was there. Surprisingly, we went to the canopy. My mom rushed to my dad for the first time in 34 years, saying, I want to greet you. Yes, God has spoken. Who is there to say no or yes? Okay, the question is to ask God whether trillion prophet or the whole prophet of the world have spoken when God say yes, no one. What happened to our mom is mere affliction. And everyone also have this affliction. When I say affliction, it's not me that you possess any power. Rather, it's just this fruit of the flesh. Mommy has that stubborn spirit. It's not a wish. This mama is not a wish. It's not a wish. Please, Baba. It is not a wish, and I want to stand here to say, the step you have taken so far, no one can blame you for that. Because you don't know who is prophet, who is not a prophet. As a man who run to ministers of God for, for counseling, for direction. Whatever you hear from them is final. And what you are hearing, you are not here from one, two, three, but almost hundred saying the same thing. So who, no one can blame you. My mommy is my mom. It's, my mom is very stubborn. That's all. I, I don't know what to say. I, 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 I look, this... In fact, I, this is the first time in my life I am believing in Miracle Direct. This is... 
I used to fall out with my mother. Each time we have a quarrel, I say, Mama, you are as stubborn as my wife. What? The, 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 your problem is that you're very stubborn, Mama. You're very stubborn. And then that's why I married a woman who is like you. And each time I tell you whatever my wife is doing, you don't even, you don't even support me. You even say, go and marry him. After all, I don't want any of my son to throw away his wife, just like your father threw away me. I said, my, mother, my daddy threw you away because you are stubborn. So what man of God said is absolutely true. And I've never, I've never said it that my mother is a witch. I always tell my father, let God be the one to vindicate her. And each time my mother is talking, the one thing she says anytime is, I am not afraid of going anywhere. If I am a witch, heavens will see. But if I'm not a witch, I will live to see the reconciliation of this family. This is wonderful. Thank you. Um, 34 years. Let us blame Satan. Don't blame your husband. Your husband also cannot blame you for what happened. Satan, we should blame. Satan, shame on you. So, I want to host you people. I want to join your family. From now on, I want to join your family. I'm part of the family. I will leave my, my apartment two bedroom flat and another two bedroom flat for the whole family until I finish seeing them. When they leave here, they should set table and let them meet together. But Baba, I will be meeting you one on one for counseling. Let us talk. We have to talk. And I want to, I want to congratulate you. You have wonderful children. Even my brother, you say, he doesn't greet you. It's not his fault. He doesn't know what to do. He just don't know what to do. He's confused. It's just confused because the whole thing has affected the children. And the children, they don't know what to do. This man is just grace. He's just enjoying the grace of standing, carry out the, 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 the little assignment he carry out by bringing the family together. So it's not his fault, not that he hates you. You have wonderful children, wonderful children. I want to thank you all. Thank you very much for your role. Thank you. So, Mama, you come back for testimony. Please just sit down. Yeah. I'm very, very happy for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, obviously, before I left England, I know I will have the last laugh. And I'm getting it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Emmanuel, I thank God for a day like this. And I thank God for raising a prophet like T.B. Joshua in our time. Some of my friends from South Africa, England, they call me often to tell me that, look, you are living just behind the prophet. And then people are coming from all over the world to tap from this anointing. And you are so close and you tell me you are diabetic for eight years. I feel very pity for myself because if I had known Prophet T.B. Joshua before now, my marriage wouldn't have been a wreck. But today I now know and I'm standing in this auditorium to tell anybody anywhere in the world that whatever I can believe in is very real. Very, very real. Anytime, any day. My diabetes is gone. I came here. I, I, anywhere I'm going, I come with my two drugs. They're always in my pocket. Even if I'm going to the TP Joshua, I need to eat and take my drug. I need to take my drug. So I don't even believe in anything. I believe in my drug. This is glycolazide. This one is uh, Gavusmet. I've been on this drug for eight years, for goodness sake, for eight years. So I've been languishing and I, 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 I don't know, I've been wasting. Please, I want to see them. Let them go and have a time, family, have time together. <laughs> yeah. Earth has no sorrow that heaven does not feel. And the reconciliation of this family proves that Jesus Christ is concerned about us, wants to be involved in everything about us, and walk us through whatever life brings. As Christians, we are commissioned solution providers and have been given the ministry of reconciliation. The joy on their faces are evident as they leave the auditorium to have their first family meal together in years.
Thank you, Jesus Christ, for restoring this broken home. My name is Obiageri Opoko, the daughter-in-law of Emmanuel Opoko, which is our daddy. And my mother-in-law is here, Teresa Opoko. I thank T.B. Joshua for this day, because it is a great day in this family of Opoko. We have been running up and down for just this day to happen in our life just to see the solution or the end of this problem. If you have never seen or witnessed, you will not know that this is a problem. But when it happened to you, you will know that it's a big problem. I thank this very man for bringing us together, to die together, to be together, and to share together. May the Lord who has positioned him in this position, we never bring him down. To all his generation, to all the people that is who has worked inside this ministry, their story will never remain the same. In the name of Jesus. In conclusion, Emma Noel. My name is Ebisem Melpoko. I'm the wife to the third son. In fact, I would say I'm the most happiest person here because I remembered when I was getting married to my husband, my family thought he never had any family member. In fact, I'm so happy because I believe right now they'll be watching me sitting and dining with my husband family. So I'm very, very, very happy. Emmanuel. Uh, it's a wonderful day. <laughs> I never realized maybe in this world I can be able to toast with my ex-wife. Well, I never know it will ever come like this. <laughs> but it's a happy to be honest, it's a wonderful day to me. And uh, not only that, I have forgiven her whatever. Whatever had happened between me and her, my heart is clear. Amen. Now it's my wife. <laughs> After their glorious reconciliation in Christ Jesus, the Okpoku family spent quality time together at the faith resort ground of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, praying in unity as a family and worshipping God in the beauty of His holiness. Truly, the gospel of God's grace changes and challenges everything. To His power, nothing is impossible. Boy, your memma, boy, your memma, boy, your memma. Boy, your memma, boy, your memma, boy, your memma. Oh, where am I, Maya? Sinkene mudo, sinkene nyangwa. Abaku rezurike, oh, memma. Hey, oh, memma. Hey, oh, memma. Oh, memma. Oh, memma. Emmanuel, my name is Okechuku Francis Oboko. 
I'm the elder son of uh, Mr. Emmanuel Obuko. I want to thank God um, for the prophet T.B. Joshua of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. I want to thank God for a day like this. I never believe in my lifetime is go I'm going to be a part of this, especially seeing my mother and my father come back together after 34 years. To me, it's more than a miracle. It is more than a miracle. My junior brother here has said a lot. I just want to thank God, Emmanuel, for a day like this. Uh, my name is uh, Ikechuku Opoko. I'm the third son. Well, my brothers, uh, they've said it all. Uh, I don't need to say anything much than to say, Emmanuel, I'm giving glory. I've seen many prophets, but there's no prophet like him. Emmanuel. <laughs> With the pains of the past gone and forgotten, the family hug themselves and laugh together. It is hard to imagine that this family had been separated for more than 34 years. After the word of prophecy from Prophet T.B. Joshua, the power of God stepped onto the scene and broke the spirit of division and unforgiveness that had held the family in bondage for so many decades. <laughs> Following this remarkable reconciliation, the family returned for a joyous testimony the following week. Emmanuel! Yeah. Yeah, today is a really great day for me. I never know a day like this will come. Uh, you see my wife here? I never realized I can ever be together with her. I don't even dream that it can be possible. Her name is Teresa. My name is Emmanuel Woye Oboko from Anambra State. Since this problem started, the hatred was so much that I don't like to see any woman that her name is Teresa. <laughs> I don't give, even give them lift in my car. If I give you lift and your name is Teresa, I would ask you to come down. <laughs> so you can imagine the weight of the whole thing before I left for England. So... One step forward, three steps backward. Nothing to show for it. Am I the only African man in England? Anywhere we go, they say, you know, it's your wife. Sometimes they call them anywhere. I make money and the money disappear. Sometimes you pay, I make money, pay the money inside the bank. <laughs> and when I go to the next week, the money gone. I never know that there can ways things can happen negatively and you will be laboring in vain. Everything I put it on head of my wife anyway. <laughs> I clog everything that she might be the cause. But I was proved wrong last Sunday by the man of God that she's not a witch. And most surprisingly, today, we were on the prayer line, and the wise men we are touching us, touching us. I was eagerly looking, looking at her. <laughs> the first said, well, they touch her, nothing. Another said, come, they touch her, nothing. <laughs> Up to seven times, she was just calm. Then I went, I, I come out from my seat. I came out from my seat and shook her. I shook her hands because I was surprised. So, since that Sunday, 
till today, I have actually accepted her back. <laughs> Knowing truly well that for 34 years, no contact of any kind, no contact of any kind, the hatred was building up. Today, everything is cleared. There is no hatred between me and her or my children. You see, look at my children and grandchildren. All of them come out from me and her. She's the mother of all the children. And I thank God and I thank man of God for making it real. Yeah. Because I never believed a day like this will come to pass. Glory be to God for making it possible for me and my family. Once again, shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? Praise the Almighty God. Amen. My name is Mrs. Teresa Nguan Michael Buku of Israel well also. This is my second time of entering this church. I thank Almighty God from TV Junction to invigorate me of not being a witchcraft, which is, is selling in my, in my hometown even if in, in my home, compound children. But um, as God has made it, God knows better than me. So I also thank God, mighty God, to unite me and my children and my husband together. And, uh, uh, my name is Okechuku Francis Oboko. I'm the elder son of uh, Mr. Emmanuel Oboko. Emmanuel. I thank God for a day like this, that I'm alive to witness uh, this uh, great reunion. I never believed I would live to see a day like this. For 34 years, my parents have been separated, and the hatred they had between themselves is unimaginable. Honestly, I think it's only in synagogue this kind of miracle can happen. There is nowhere in the world. <laughs> Through the prophecy the man of God gave to him, things started to turn around in our family. In fact, for the first time, we prayed together, we ate together for the past 34 years. It's unbelievable. Emmanuel, my name is Kenneth Ifayo Boko. I'm the second son of the family. If I'm allowed to give testimony continuously, I will give this testimony for a whole year, every Sunday for one year. I remain the most amazed of all the members of the family. Amazed in the sense that uh, I, I never believe a day like this will come to pass. In fact, uh, when my daddy was insisting he was coming to Nigeria and uh, he was going to come to Scone, I thought it, it was one of his um, promises because so many times I've tried to bring him home and uh, uh, he has always come up with one excuse or the other. But surprisingly, this time around, he decided on his own that he was going to come, that all he wanted me to do was to send him ticket money if I can afford it. I said, why not? And I did. And uh, behold, he got into the country on a Thursday. And uh, he started telling me on Saturday evening that I should take him to school. I told him that I don't like anything that would disrupt my sleep. Uh, you, you're talking about waking up 5 a.m. to go to school. And then I don't, I've never done that for a very long time. I can only wake up this early if somebody asks me to come and pick money for a contract. And, uh, no, but that is the truth. You know, and not to go to one prophet who are, you know, full of lies and deceit, because that's the way I see uh, prophets all over the country. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the reality. And honestly, it's only in a church like this, like my brother said, because um, the reunion and the prophecy has not only reconciled my family, it has reconciled me and God, because I rarely go to church. 
In a nutshell, the disunity has um, uh, actually taken a very bad uh, toll on the family because it actually disrupted um, our educational uh, careers. This, uh, because um, at the time, after my mother left uh, the family, things started working anti-clockwise for my dad. And uh, he tried to marry another wife. The woman came in and uh, she did her best. She was a wonderful woman. As a matter of fact, she, she actually brought us all up the way our dad wanted it. But then things were just not working. They were working anti-clockwise. And my dad has always told us that our mother is a witch and has been always against his progress since she left. But when I, um, I started growing up, I started um, playing a very neutral role on the issue, believing that um, I don't have any uh, instrument used for scanning witches. But I know that <laughs> if my dad is correct, one day uh, God will reveal it to him. And then if he is not, one day God too will reveal it to him because um, I've always tried to play the role of a son to both uh, parents because that's exactly what matters. So I've been an unbiased umpire on the matter. If I, I see my dad in England, I try to make him comfortable as much as I can. And then back uh, here in Nigeria, I try to give my mother all the comfort I can afford, believing that one day, a day like this will, will actually come. But I didn't know it was going to come too soon. As a matter of fact, only a prophet, if I called Prophet T.B. Joshua a prophet, it's an understatement. I prefer to see him as God's incarnate. Well, we, 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 we know you have a lot to say, but we want to make it point clear that the man of God said, he is not the healer, he is not the deliverer. He is not the savior. He only knows the savior. He only knows the healer. He only knows the deliverer who is our Lord and savior. That he is not Jesus. He is a servant of our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. And we thank God for using the man of God in this mighty way to do these mighty things in the life of the people. Emmanuel. My name is Chiwendo Poko. I happen to be the last child of my mother. My mom happens to be the uh, second wife from my, from my dad. So like growing up without a dad it was really it was really really challenging for me because I remember I could remember way back then in primary school if I'm asked where is my dad I had really had nothing to say it was I mean it was really challenging for me but I want to bless the name of God for making it possible for me to see my dad for the first time in my life after how many years Could you tell us how old are you now 23. So for 23 years, you are seeing your father for the first time? Yes. Wow. Here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations? Yes. Wow. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? Emmanuel. Yeah. My name is Ikechuku Buku. I'm the third son. I just thank God for today. And I know whatever God has done is permanent. Nobody else can change it. I believe one thing about this please. The prophecy here is very accurate. Unmistakable. I don't, I don't really understand. I'm not the man of God, but the way he does his thing, only God knows. Everything he says is accurate, and don't doubt it. Just don't doubt it. Now that God has brought unity, peace, and comfort into the family, as Joshua said, that as for him and his family, that we serve the Lord. We want the whole family to go and serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. And as you do so, the blessings of God will continue to abide in this family in Jesus' name. Voilà, chers auditeurs, nous voyons maintenant l'homme de Dieu. Nous remercions le Seigneur pour cette réconciliation dont nous voyons maintenant en direct ici à la synagogue église de nation. Cet homme qui a reçu un message prophétique de l'homme de Dieu disant où est sa femme. Effectivement, ce message a été confirmé par lui et la réconciliation a pris place car cette femme, depuis plusieurs années, ne tombe pas ensemble et nous avons vu cette jeune femme qui a vu son père juste pour la première fois. We believe you have been inspired by the clip you have just watched. Click here to subscribe to witness more of God's power at work in our generation today and stay up to date with the latest prophecies, deliverances, sermons and testimonies from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations and changing the world.